Hello everyone and welcome back to Backlot Banter. My name is Tucker Hazel. Today I am joined by my silent and deadly co-host Tanner Dykstra and today we're here to talk about A Quiet Place Day 1, the long-anticipated prequel Ooh. to The Quiet Place series starring Joseph Quinn and Lupita Nyong'o. Mm -hmm. We're going to break down this movie, but if you have seen it and want to talk to us about it, leave comments, join our Discord server, like, and subscribe to the channel. Tanner. Yeah. A Quiet Place Day One. Yeah. Directed by Michael Cernoski. That's starring right. Starring two fantastic little actors. <laughs> yes. What do you think? Uh, I really like this one, Tucker. I'll, I'll come hot out the gate and say I think this is the best Quiet Ooh, Place okay, movie. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I like the Quiet Place films, you mm -hmm. know, Quiet Place and Quiet Place Part 2. Uh, they operate on a very even keel for me. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't think this one is leagues better, no. but I think it... It's I a think, very consistent series. It's a very consistent series. I think Sarnowski is just simply a better director sure, yeah, than uh, John Krasinski is, yeah. and I just... Am a bigger fan of the characterization of sure. Lupita Nyong'o yes. and to a certain extent Joseph Quinn, yeah, but yeah. this is Nyong'o's movie. Yes, it definitely is, and I I agree with you. I think this is a, a consistent series. I my favorite still is A Quiet Place. Yep. I think that first movie, learning about the world, mm -hmm. I think is so much more intoxicating than anything the other two movies have done. I'm just that's like, right. oh, walking on the little salt, a little pass of powder, yeah, and so I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. dude, it's that's cool. so cool. It's, cool. it's so cool. But this movie does. I think it does prequel, Very and well. and like, what a lot of people say about horror movies and horror universes is like, yeah. oh, we don't want to see how things started, we don't want to see how things are explained, because it's the uh -huh. mystery that's so terrifying, and I don't agree with that, but I can understand it, but I yeah. think it'd be, you'd be hard-pressed to watch A Quiet Place Day 1 and say that this isn't a worthy film in its own right, or a worthy story to be told in this world. A Quiet Place Day 1 is about the first time that the what are known as death angels, mm -hmm. but the monsters in the quiet place came to Earth, and and the first couple days, it's it, it's, yeah. it's a lie, it's a, it's a marketing lie. It's like it's uh, like day one through four yeah. <laughs> of that uh, apocalypse, essentially. Yeah. how people reacted to that, yeah. but it isn't just that. This is actually a very focused film. It is an apocalypse yeah. film. It is a disaster film, but it's also a very personal and focused story about Lupita Nyong'o's character Sam dealing with her own mortality yes. because she's dying of cancer. And that that is where this movie, I think, plays to like a really strange strength. Yeah, it's like, like it, I, I wasn't I wasn't expecting this to be like a super character driven narrative. Exactly. But it really ultimately is about that with a backdrop that's of, the, that is, of a disaster movie. That's the biggest success yeah. of the film is that it sort of like backdoors it, it's a it, it it backdoors the whole prequel thing. Yeah. Uh, and essentially that sits on the back burner because we don't learn anything more really. No, not really. I'm sure there is some stuff you can gather. I mean, but... Before we started rolling we talked about a certain sequence that we yeah. didn't really understand. But no. it's not like, you know, we're getting military officials no. In no. or scientists being like, this is what the death angels no, are, yeah, and we, this is what their biology we, and stuff. You're right. Like. We really don't actually learn that much. We don't, <laughs> we don't learn that much, but what we do get to see is a different story in this universe that, again, I feel is much stronger than the character stories of, yeah, of the first two films. That, yeah. um, mostly because of Nyong'o's abilities as an actress. Yeah, I think yeah. she is very strong. Honestly, you know, but for my money, not in enough things that Hollywood oh, course, is making absolutely. nowadays. Would yeah. love to see her in more, and would love to see this be yeah. kind of a but she Block is Maz Kanata. Tanner. She is Maz Kanata, that's right. I'd love to see this be like a blockbuster breakout for her because she yeah. is really fantastic in this. Yeah. I think, uh, as I said, it, it's it's really her movie. She has this whole um, reckoning with her own mortality and quite an interesting goal. I mean, this isn't present in any, any of the marketing material, so no, it's if not. you want to count this as a spoiler, I guess it is, but you know, you're not, I'm not ruining anything. Well, actually, interestingly, I don't think the cancer thing is in any no, of the marketing I, I didn't I, notice I, it. I didn't know that. And I, and I think what's interesting about A Quiet Place Day 1 is you can watch it as either a compelling narrative about mortality mm -hmm. through the eyes of a, of a character who is dying of cancer, mm -hmm. and I think uh, fantastically portrayed by Lupita Nyong'o, who's one of my favorite actors, I think one of the best current working actresses, mm -hmm. Or you can watch it as a disaster movie. It, it is a horror movie. Yes. And there are sequences going down dark hallways, mm -hmm. scary thing in the shadows. Be quiet. Yeah, we'll be quiet, yeah. <laughs> but this is actually... It is a disaster movie. And so the fact that it was marketed basically solely as that makes sense. Yeah. And also it's a lot harder to sell like, hey, right, yeah, well. you know, the, the reality of the narrative of the film, which is a lot more slow uh -huh. and sad. You sell but, people on the spectacle yes. and then make them care with the characters. But I want to talk about the spectacle because okay. I think that that is where this feels so compelling as a part of the Quiet Place universe, but not as a Quiet Place 3. 
This yeah. is uh, obviously it is a na- narratively it is a prequel, but tonally and um, spectacle wise, it is a complete departure yes. from the other two films, I mean, which we are, are much in... more personal, small cast in terms of just straight up. There are very few people in those movies, yep. um, and it's about one or two of these creatures stalking in the dark. Yeah, uh, small environments, things like that. This is this is know, in a city yep. and. Thou- hundreds to thousands of these things. They're fucking everywhere. And my favorite aspects of this movie, outside of the character narrative, mm. is where it feels like a disaster movie. In the Death Angels are like stampeding, and yeah. when it, and when they run by, it's an earthquake. Do I, and, and I it's like a tornado. Se- it's like a hurricane. I'm like oh I love my the God. sequences <laughs> of the uh, the military. Often is a presence in the film where they're like flying over, making yeah. announcements, and then we cut to a wide of the city where they're just like trampling over buildings and like swiping yeah. at the yeah. helicopters and stuff like that. And effectively, the military are like trying to herd them throughout the throughout the film. There's quite the in- interesting sort of the world building uh, yeah. main is maintained here. I would say that was a big strength. Of something that you really enjoyed in the first film yeah. and really uh, makes it quite interesting here. There are things that we learn or the characters learn quite slowly over the course of the uh, first two films yeah. that are just sort of like understood here. Yeah. The well, actually, Death Angels not being able to swim is yes. is figured out quite quickly and then is used to, uh, you know, plot effect in this film yeah. a number of times. Uh, but I also like that it doesn't do something that can be really annoying in prequels, mm-hmm. which is feel the need to meticulously explain things we as fans already yes. know. Yes, It does feel a little bit weird that this film ostensibly skips over the people that were watching figuring out that sound is what triggers things. That We don't really see that, mm-hmm. but it makes sense from a... A script writing perspective of this is a part of a larger yeah. series. It's where... a very clever scre- screenwriting yeah. trick to effectively what happens is Lupita Nyong'o's character, whose name is Sam, yes. Sam- Samira, Samira, something like I that, think so, yeah. um, is like knocked out during yeah. the initial invasion, the initial uh, attack. And then when she wakes up, she's a part of like a, a surviving group who is holed up in a theater yeah. and they're all being quiet. Yes. Like that, 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 that jump, that logical jump by all the characters in the film was made while she was out. Yes. And then like the military is flying over and is like, hey, shut the fuck up. Well, and also the same thing about the Death Angels. Yep. We didn't know how they worked in, especially the first movie, which mm-hmm. is what made them so terrifying. But now that that is established, it is twisting this to a disaster movie where it's not about individual uh, Death Angels. It's about the fact that there's hundreds of them. And, yeah. And, like, that... It's not scary to have a Death Angel stalking you in the dark anymore. Mm-hmm. Or, and you have to be quiet. But when there's thousands of them and it's in a city and much more echo and lots more yeah. people to there's do with... There's debris everywhere yes. that can tip over or you can trip on or might, you know, make it, an echo It's a perfect the escalation yeah. where this has, maintains that tension in the other ones, even though... We, over the course of now this being the third film in the series, we should have lost the fear of these things. Yeah. But because they put thousands of them and we're in a totally different environment, mm-hmm. it maintains that tension. It's also important to note that a lot of the fear factor comes from the performances of our actors. Yes, I, absolutely. Um, there's a moment especially where I was like, you know, obviously Lupita Nyong'o has her iconic horror role in mm-hmm. Jordan Peele's Us as yeah. well, uh, where she... Which I, know, I think is still probably her best role in I'd, I'd say so too. Um, but she is a great eye actor. Of course. Uh, she can she can <laughs> pop her eyes out yeah. to a fascinating and enthralling degree yeah. to like sort of drive home the, the severity of any situation that happens a number of times in Quiet Place. Yeah. Um, also worth noting is Joseph Quinn, who, yeah. you, who, yeah. who you mentioned, uh, who only really shows up about halfway through the film. He does. Um, who is much more of a he's much less self-assured than uh than sam the putin yeah. character is he mm-hmm. is panicking a lot more yeah. he is freaking out a lot more he needs to be calmed down uh and their relationship is odd is honestly uh, quite interesting that yes. carries you through that second half of the film as he joins sam on her journey to Get a slice of pizza. Yes, that is that is her goal in the film. Yeah, it's more comp- emotionally complex than that, as we come to find out. Yeah. But effectively, that is what she tells. What's his character? Eric. Eric. Yeah. Uh, she tells Eric, "Is like I'm going to get a slice of pizza." Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about how this apocalypse disaster uh, structure of the film is is really there to support the personal narrative about Mm -hmm. wrestling with your own mentality um because that's where again the film has its most interesting and unique strengths um i definitely felt as the idea of sam wanting to just go get a slice of pizza was introduced i'm like 
this is weird. Mm. But I do think that the film sells itself on the uh, how, the meaningfulness of this narrative to the character yeah. uh, to where by the end of the film I'm completely bought into it. And I think that what is... What's, in, what's hard to, like, reconcile with at the beginning, because Sam is such a different kind of character from your traditional action or horror movie protagonist, yep. uh, is that she is not afraid because she knows she's going to die soon. Yeah. And she does not have the drive to escape and and run to the first thing to the, yeah. to the dock to get on a boat mm-hmm. or to, you know, call for help or whatever, because she is a very socially distant person yep. and she also is not worried necessarily about getting on the boat and surviving to the next her day goals because are entirely different from every other character in the film yes because all she wants to do is live her the end of her life peacefully yeah um and and and, and get the slice of pizza well, that yeah, means get, something to her emotions. yeah get the closure is, it's a, a closure, yeah, is, right. a, is effectively what yeah. she's looking for i mean this is introduced before the disaster the apocalyptic element of the film happens is yeah. that the her and her hospice group are going into the city, and she's very much hell bent on effectively getting this slice of pizza. She wants a new, she wants a hot New York slice, yeah. um, and that and gold, who can blame her? That's true, and that goal doesn't change when monsters start invading no. New York City, no. and it's very interesting and ultimately very endearing. And you know that yeah. might be a hard sort of almost unbelievable character element to pull off if it were not for the very emotional humanist elements present in the script and, again, yeah. Young's performance. Well, definitely. But it's interesting because you say endearing, but she's an endearing character because I like Lupita, Lupita Nyong'o. Yeah. But at the start of the movie... She's quite unlikable. She's she's not, she's kind of a gruff... She's like, a grump. She, she is a grump, yeah. yeah. She's like just like making like... Uh, like yeah, fa- yeah. faces to people that are like really I'm kind of done with your shit like I don't mm-hmm. want to put up with this um, but over the course of the film as you learn more about her through her relationship with uh, with Eric and her mm-hmm. cat Frodo you realize that there is a sense of humor to her yeah. you realize that there is more of an emotional depth what caused mm-hmm. her to be such a closed off person mm-hmm. and that is where that is where you can feel the touch of director Michael Cernoski yes. in the in the action blockbuster summer franchise horror sci-fi spectacle film A Quiet Place Part One is that Michael Cernoski, director of Pig from a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. starring Nicolas Cage, is an indie filmmaker who who ha- I haven't I don't actually know his other films, but through Pig, what I know him yep. for, and then you can see the influence here is about telling very human grounded stories about. Emotions and, de- and dealing with yourself and relationships and things like that. Mm. And a quiet place day one, a quiet place day one is that. Yes. Uh, this is outside of the horror sequences, outside of the action sequences, outside of the disaster sequences. It it kind of is just like a indie movie of about a woman like and, dealing with cancer. It is the platonic <laughs> ideal of you know because this is very much in the line of you know. You make a successful indie film that's very good and well logged yeah. by critics, and then a big studio sweeps in and is like, "Hey, you should direct a Marvel movie, yeah, or you should yeah. direct a DC movie, or a Quiet Place movie." In the, for for example, yeah. this and is the sometimes platonic... you can feel their identity stay, and sometimes you can't. This but is this the... time, yes, you can feel it stay. It's the platonic ideal of what that should be yes. is that you get somebody who understands the emotional, well done storytelling. Yeah. And you use those skills, implement them into something, like we said, that has a bit more of a summer blockbuster spectacle to it. Um, Also worth noting that I just had to double check here. This is Sarnowski's second feature film. Okay, so he didn't do other films. I was like, oh man, I really wish I'd known his other one. He didn't. No, he's just done short films before Pig and then... Quiet, quiet place. place, yeah. So yeah, I, I'm very interested to see what he what what he's got up yeah, his sleeve no, next. It's, it's a Robin Hood movie, apparently. Oh, oh, we'll see right, how yeah, it yeah. turns out. Um, um what, 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 want to shout out as well. You mentioned Frodo. Yeah. Great, great animal great actor. Great acting, yeah. Great, great cat acting in this one. Great cat actor. Um, I mean, you, you have you have the lovable animal sidekicks. Yes. Uh, yeah, you, and, and also it's. A real cat for like ninety five percent of the shots. I was trying to peg. There's I was a like, couple where I'm like, that's moving a little weird. Yeah, and I didn't know if the cat was just moving weird or if it was CGI. But I'm pretty sure it was CGI. In some it might have been. There's one where it's chasing the mouse. I'm like, yep. that's not real. I was gonna that's say that's a fake cat. Yeah. Um, but real cat physically in the environment. This mm-hmm. is a surprisingly practical film yes. in terms of locations and set mm-hmm. dressing and things like that. And I do think that one thing we really have to praise this film for is the craft of it. You get an. A, um, person known for independent filmmaking like mm-hmm. Mar- Michael Sarnowski, and he doesn't delve too deeply into the traditional modern blockbuster, everything is on a green screen, nothing is practical in the environment. Thank Christ. Lighting doesn't exist. Uh-huh. Thank, because 
there's some great lighting in this film. Absolutely. There's some really soft uh, yeah. environmental lighting. There's some really good production design in especially that church shot yep. where, where they come out of the um, ground. I'm like, like, that's an amazing set. Backlighting in that sequence where they're in the flooded subway tunnel yeah, and the great. Death Angel's kind of like crawling on the ceiling trying to avoid the water yeah. that's rising. Yeah, up. and one, I think the undersung uh, best element of this film, oh, yeah? framing. The Ooh. framing of this film is really, really special, and I think it uses the acting, uh, camera work, and what is there of the CGI, because obviously there's a lot of CGI in this film yes. to its best effect. There are only a handful of, like, wide-scope CGI-filled shots. Mm-hmm. There's the one shot where the uh, government blows up one of the bridges to Manhattan. Yep. Great shot. Looks yep. really, really good. Really good. There, of course, uh, are the shots of... Hundred, hundreds of death angels like running. Mm-hmm. Those look good. Yep. But where most of the uh, CGI is used is in sequences where most of the frame is filled by people or cars or escalators mm-hmm. or windows. And through the f- fog or through the cracks, you see the death the, the death angel scatter yeah. or scutter. Yeah. Um, and, and those are where you're like, they know what they're doing here. This isn't focused on the monsters and we're just using CGI and the budget's going to be massive. This is, the monster is scary and even just seeing a little sliver of it through the frame between Lupita Nyong'o's head and the bottom of the car that she's hiding under uh-huh. and you just keep brrr, and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just really well done filmmaking. There's a great, there's a, a great many memorable sequence in this, yeah. in, in this one, like the, uh, the crowd marching through that oh, New York definitely. street yeah. uh, trying to get to the docks or whatever. Uh, the sequence of Joseph Quinn having to chase Frodo into like this construction very area good, and good, the yeah. one of the Death Angels rising up right next to his face. Um, just a lot of that. Yeah. I, and so, yeah, I would, I, if we're wrapping up yeah. here, um, highly recommend Absolutely. Quiet Place Day One. Yeah. One of the better, uh, you know, sort of series entries of this totally. summer so far. Yeah. So, Tucker, I'm going to go a 7.5 out of 10. All right. I'm going to go an 8.3 okay. out of 10. I think this is a great movie. Yeah. I, I was. Thoroughly surprised by... I, I thought I would like it because I liked the other movies. And again, this is just a consistent series. There are no bad Quiet Place movies. Yep. And what's going to be so cool is... Let, let's just say we get like... We're, we know we're getting a part three. We are. And then there's there's probably going to be like one more something yeah. uh, after that. Yeah. But I, I hope this, theory, this series stays small mm-hmm. because we, we too often see series introduce spinoffs or prequels or whatever that are on a different level of quality uh-huh. but there are no bad Quiet Place movies and really? if you're sitting down and you want to just spend a weekend watching Quiet Place movies and they're all good let's yeah. just say 10 years from now once the series is done I, I hope that is able to be maintained yes I, 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 I would hope so because as well. it's also like it's like the new IP of the yeah. last 10 years mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it not based on anything else no yeah it's it, it's cool it's definitely yeah. cool yeah for sure well Tucker. Liked it. Go see the movie. Go see the movie. We'll have more reviews. You, you get the you get the drill. You get the picture. Bye bye. Motion picture. I should sit closer to the camera so it looks like I'm bigger than you. Okay, I'll sit farther away. Hey everyone, backlog banter here. Hey everyone, backlog banter here. Because <laughs> you're so small. Because I'm tiny. I'm, I'm up here. I'm big. <laughs> I've I've told you that I don't understand why big things are slower, right? You mean like animals? Well, I mean like in fiction. That's not true. Like giants. They're not slower. They're But they move slow. No, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know like in the movie a giant moves really slow? He's not moving very... He's not moving slow. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not true. It's not like the giant step across the thing, like, takes longer compared to the distance that it's going. Uh-huh. See no Tucker, this is this is what I mean by I don't understand. I know you don't understand it. That's not true. <laughs> they move slow. <laughs> See, Attack on Titan makes sense because they they're big and they move fast. <laughs> I don't understand why small things move fast. Exactly. No, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. And normal size things move normal. Normal size speed. <laughs> normal normal speed. size speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy fuck! Mm. Like changing candy what are they Monday's eating? birthday. What do you mean? Remember when they were eating that oh. thing? Oh, is that look like their eggs? I th- yeah, I, I thought it was their eggs. That was weird. Yeah. Yeah, that was an odd scene. Because they, but yeah, because he like cracked it open and like ate it. Like he's like, hey, hey guys, <laughs> hey, hey, we got shit here. <laughs>
Um, and I was like, maybe like, ten or chilies ready. And you go, <laughs> and you just start tearing into it with your fucking claws. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's just like that. 